Next, though, as promised, we have Mikhail from Crazy Labs, who once again I'd like to thank as our sponsors of the Hyper Casual and Social Games track, who we, we can't do this without. So, hi, welcome. Thank you for being hi, here. Hi, everyone. It's good Hello. to have you here. Uh, thank um, you. Yeah, as, uh, as uh, Rotem alluded to before, you're going to be uh, talking about Hyper Casual Live Ops and building da a data driven growth machine. So, we're really exactly. fascinated. Mm -hmm. um, before you start, though, I'll let you start getting uh, set up, providing you're all good and uh, feeling yeah, comfortable. I'll just show my screen. Yeah, just share your screen. I'll let you know that it's all up and working. And while you're doing that, though, I'm going to let the chat know and the audience, you've been very good with the questions today. It's been very engaged. Um, so, yeah, keep keep talking in the chat and keep throwing those questions into the Q&A because uh, once the talk's over, I'll be back and we'll be going through some questions and answers. But uh, providing you're all okay and feeling comfortable we'll uh, get started okay yeah so here so, we go see it's crazy yeah. labs <laughs> okay so thank you sophia i'm happy to be here hello everyone uh thank you all for joining us today um my name is michael sahari and i'm crazy labs vp live ops today i'll talk about the strategy behind live ops what we do in live ops and how we bring value to our games and to the company Remember that paper plane we used to play when we were kids? We took a piece of paper, we folded it, we threw it on our best friend, and sometimes it hit him. Sometimes it hit the teacher in class, sometimes it hit the window. It was fun and amusing, and it was a nice game. But when dealing with 50 games, we can take a chance. We need to create a value fast and accurately. We don't have time to see if our feature are hit by mistake, and maybe we'll improve the game. We are committed to provide value for our partners, developers, and studios around the world. So we create a method. The method enables us to take any hyper-casual game and bring value, enhance performance, prolong the user value and the usage, and increase revenue for the developer. And this is the nice battle uh, that you see here. But this is not enough for us. We want to do it fast, accurate, and in scale. We took our method and create a technology that will expedite the whole process and take the game to the next level. This is the missile you see here. Although it looks scary, uh, you will see soon that it's not rocket science and it's really possible to get there. Uh, what we are going to cover today. I'll talk a little bit about Crazy Labs, about our method, about our KPIs, and I'll let you in on some of our secrets. If you have any questions during my talk, feel free to write it in to write it in the chat. So, Crazy Labs is a casual and hyper casual mobile game developer and publisher of number one hit games with over 3.5 billion downloads. Our recent games success include Acrylic Nails, I Can Paint, Tie Dye, ASMR Slicing, Amaze, and many other more. As you can see here, we have a casual games lab, a hyper casual game lab, and a crazy lab. Well, not really crazy, just a top secret, but I'm sure you will hear about it soon. First of all, what is live ops? Uh, in crazy labs, live ops defined as the stage where the game was proven as one that has valid business potential around one month after scaling up. So the whole presentation is referring only to games that pass some certain KPIs, and we know that they have a real business potential. Our goal is to increase the game's lifetime, make sure it will be sustainable over time, and will gain profit for the developers and for the company from now to the horizon. So basically, there are some well-known way to do it. First of all, it's content. Everyone knows content is a king. We need to make sure um, the game has enough levels, the, the, the GLD is good. We need to make sure we have a rich store, that the item in the store will give value to the player and that they will excite him or her. Uh, second, in hyper casual, we need to keep our players in a good mood. Make sure the levels are interesting enough, but not too hard. We need to create a balance between challenging and satisfying the player. And we look into the game psychology. We integrate into the game design the principle of progression, achievement, and rewards. Let's see some examples. Um, so in this slide, you can see two of our rising stars, tie-dye and food clinic. 
In both games, we haven't reached the shop and the variety of tools the player can use. Every time we released a new version uh, with additional content, we saw an increase of performance of more than 5%. In tie-dye, you can see here we added bottles types, water types, and tie types, so there are endless options for the player. It keeps the game interesting, which increases the playing time and therefore the revenue. Of course, when you have interest in content, the player will be happy to pay for uh, uh, to pay with RV as well. Uh, in hyper casual games, we want to keep our players satisfied and positively excited. We encourage them while playing the, and congratulate them when they pass another level. We make sure they receive positive feedback throughout the gameplay. So things like awesome, congratulations, you made it, confetti flying in there, fireworks, and overall spirit of happy, 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 fun, 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 joy, 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 always works. Um, although hyper-casual games considered as short in terms of lifetime, the psychology behind players' motivation is the same as in other genres. We know that players like to feel a sense of accomplishment and a sense of progression. They would like to know that they achieved something and they are rewarded for that. We can see in this uh, specific example uh, how this principle is implemented in Food Clinic, one of our games. We show the player before and after photo so they can see their progress and they know they did good. We show them a progress bar, which always work, that push them toward getting the reward of this new cleaning tool, and we celebrate the achievement between confetti and relevant text. The graph you see here, the columns, the bars, is a real graph that describes our user value. We had a constant positive trend. By the way, you can see that we have some not so good versions as well, but we monitor it. But the feature I mentioned in the last couple of slides improved the engagement and the user value uh, significantly. So now, after revealing all these successful tests, I would like to share with you a personal confession. There are some people are gifted, and they know exactly which feature can hit the spot and make all the difference for their game. They know exactly what to do in order to create number one hit game, and they have all the answers. I am not like this. That's not me. To be honest, I don't have all these secrets in my pocket. I have no idea what's going to work in advance. No clue as to which feature will increase the revenue or uh, will double the LTV. That's why uh, my team and I test as many features as possible. We try everything and focus on creating real value that will improve the game's performance. And when I say everything, I really do mean everything. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. I recommend listening to your colleagues and your team. I take the time to hear them out and collect their ideas because they believe the right way is to literally test everything. If I learn something in my experience as a growth architect, it's that if you follow the method, if you test everything, if you measure it, measure it very, very carefully, you will get to the desired result. In this case, the operational processes and operational efficiency is really important. And I'll show you how we do it in a couple of months. Here you can see the many tests we've done in order to get the optimized look and feel of a maze. Look at the screen. Which one of these designs do you think will be the most engaging one? So you can, uh, you can choose your own preferred one. But after around 100 of tests, we realized that this one is the natural look and feel this performed the best. Um, we would never have guessed that before actually conducting this test. We encourage you and encourage the design team to improve the UX and the design, but eventually we got to a surprising result. Therefore, I encourage you to test everything and assume nothing. Only the data can tell you what works best for you and for your audience. Let me give you a sneak peek of what happens under the hood here at Crazy Labs. After talking so much about the method, let's see the real thing. We have a dashboard to supervise all running tests and it provides us real-time information and deep analysis for each of our running tests. 
let's look at the numbers. Um, I can talk hours about A-B testing and how to do it properly. This is not the topic of today's talk, but I really want to give you some useful tips. First of all, it's crucial to know that A-B test is the fundamental of all product improvement. Testing features in a row instead of a proper A-B test that runs group in parallel, uh, run groups at the same time. Uh, if you don't do it like this, uh, it can uh, cause a wrong product decision. So in this specific example, you can see five features that we, we've tried in parallel uh, for one of our uh, games. Group A is the control group. Always, always, always run test versus your current status. I stopped counting how many times something gets wrong with the build and without a control group that keeps the current status, we would have never guessed it out. Uh, you see here some more groups. Uh, group B is the new RV location, C is the bonus level, D is another RV text. You see some features that we've tried out. And first of all, the first thing that I look when I see result of A-B test, uh, I see that the audience is well splitted. Uh, we have the same amount of user in all groups. That means that probably a proper A-B test. Um, in addition, you can see that we measure revenue KPIs and engagement KPIs. On one hand, all our tests are carefully analyzed. We would like to make sure that we provide value for our players and create a better game uh, than the, the previous version. Our internal system gives a higher score for tests that increase game time, content consumption, engagement, and retention than features that just provide more ads without real improvement for the game. We have an internal scoring system uh, and it takes um, the KPIs under the consideration. All these decisions are being ma made by our algorithm and the mach machine uh, gets the decision for us automatically. So the last column is actually the ranking, the ranking that we get from our uh, growth machine. Uh, but in order to get an optimized ecosystem, you need to run such tests with the, within the funnel, starting from creative, throughout the onboarding process, uh, advanced level, all the way to the retention phase, monetization aspect, and many, many other uh, phases in the, in the funnel. All these tests need to run in two stores, 20 different countries, and the results can be different for organic and non-organic players. We need to consider different traffic sources and uh, player segments, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So the only way to do it is to be systematic, automatic, and data-driven. Systematic means create a method of reading and understanding the result fast. We can't invest five days in discussion for each test result. Automatic, we have tons of automation open groups automatically, closing, losing groups, apply tests with winning feature on different audience automatically, automatic UA, many, many, many automa uh, automations spreaded wherever we can, whenever we can. And of course, data-driven, as said before, all of our decisions are data-driven and based on real experiments. Uh, this is the real secret weapon of our live ops. There is no single game changer. We've built a clever operation that can push our games above and beyond. We hold in parallel, we hold in parallel hundreds of tests spread across different parts of the machine, touching different aspects of the game. This way, all the pieces come together and create this giant, well-optimized infrastructure that can simultaneously run hundreds and thousands tests in parallel. That's what, uh, that's what eventually leads to better performance, to better user acquisition capabilities, and ultimately to better games that can hit the number one spot. If you look at the numbers, you will see that every increase conduct an exponential growth thanks to our growth machine. You can see here that if we take 5% increase and add it another 5% increase and add to it another 5% increase, you get a result of 
almost 1.8 uh, increase, which is almost double the LTP. But even if you're a small studio and you can't run so many tests, in uh, a small studio or a single developer, you can create your own mini goals machine. Choose three games aspect you would like to improve and make a change even there. Even with these three types of successful tests, you can see an increase in your user value. Three tests means more than 15 increase in the revenue that will allow you uh, to pay 15% more on your CPI. And therefore you will be able to acquire more players and expand your audience. Sometimes that alone can make all the difference for a single game, maybe whether it will live or die. So I think that's it for today. Uh, just before I finish, I just want to remind you the three significant things that you need to take. Um, just a second. The three, uh, I want you to remember the three simple steps. One, create your data-driven method and work systematically. Second, test everything, assume nothing. And third one, don't look for a single game changer. Go for an accumulative increase in multiple games aspects. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoy this information. Uh, if you have any question or you want to contact me in person, uh, you can see my email and contact me directly. And now, do we have any questions? We do. We've got uh, quite a few questions. So I think we'll uh, dive straight in and see how many we okay. can get through. So the first question from Sai is, uh, what tools do you use for setup, um, for setting up A-B testing and checking the data? How do you track, um, you know, the impressions per user in an A-B test? Um, so basically, when you conduct an A-B test, you have two steps, you have two parts of the A-B test. First, you need to split the audience in an even way, as I described uh, before, and then you need to track the events according or specifically, specifically for each group. So basically, we use uh, Firebase and with the, the remote config, and this works for us really, really good. We integrate our internal events into a BigQuery and Firebase, and that's and all our A-B test methodology and algorithms based on that infrastructure. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, next question is, uh, what tools do you use for analytics and automation? Um, so we have different, first of all, we have the, the we have, oh, so that's going to be like one hour, one hour uh, uh, talk, but basically we have our, the event. So we have uh, big query events, we calculated and we aggregated them into our uh, data warehouse. And on top of that, we have many, many statistical models written in uh, Python that uh, integrate um, statistical models that calculate exactly uh, what are the results, what are the KPIs, they, they check statistical significance for each test. So we develop in-house tools written in a uh, node, I think, but like our web developers, uh, our backend developers uh, developed for us uh, internal dashboard that's built on this uh, stack. Fantastic. Um, next up is, uh, do you consider lives ops, a live ops as a temporary uh, short term event or a permanent oh. or about permanent updates to a live game? OK, it's a good question. Um, first of all, the hyper casual is, um, is a genre that uh, I think like two or three years old. So it's still evolving. I know it was considered as a really, really short term term. Uh, uh, genre and each game considered to, to be live for a couple of months and then die. From the test we've done in the last couple of months or the test we've done in the last six months, I see that the lifetime of a game can be really, really longer. It can last six months or one month or even one and a half months if you keep the game updated and you integrate all the time good and valuable feature, you can uh, prolong the game lifetime. So um, 
Fantastic. I know that it's not that the common, I know a lot of people think that it will die really, really soon, but I see that valuable content can increase the lifetime of the game. Yeah, and uh, just a few more quick fire questions, which we've got is, um, so um, all mainly about A-B testing. So the first one is, how many players are enough for A-B testing? Oh, it's a good question. So um, for, so it depends because uh, when we implement a test, if our machine or our algorithm see a huge difference between the groups, so we need less players for that. Yeah. So maybe sometimes only 5,000 per group can be enough. But if the changes and the differences are really, really small, we need to collect more data, uh, to accumulate more data in order to have statistical significance. And then we can sometimes get to 20 or 30,000 players per group. Fantastic. And, and then another one on this sort of uh, area is, how do you handle UA and game feature A-B testing in parallel? UA and um, I'm game, not sure game feature. So, um, if you, how do you effectively test um, UA and game feature sort of okay. analysis, A B testing, but at the same time, so testing the user analysis and the game features? Yeah. So, as I saw, as, as I show you in this giant infrastructure, so yeah. all piece of the system is actually act separately. So we have creative tests and we have uh, tests in the stores and we have tests of uh, the game and we have tests on our monetization and everyone can really, really work independently. And, yeah. and we make sure that the tests are not hurting each other, but our system know how to isolate it and just uh, work simultaneously. So this is exactly, it's a great question. And this is exactly the machine that we have. Yeah, um, another question is, um, at the, just so they're specifically focusing on the prototype stage, do you still use um, methods such as A-B testing during the prototype stage or is it different than live ops? Yeah, so it, it's a little bit different because in the prototype test, sometimes like the incremental improvement that I, I show you, it's not enough. In the prototype, you need to bring like 30% improvement or 40, sometimes you need really to double it in, and you don't have time to run all these tests. So actually in the prototypes, we do run sometimes A-B tests on the creative, but the game needs, uh, the A-B test is just um, too slow. And you actually there you need to implement significant imp uh, changes of feature really, really fast. So I will not recommend this methodology for the prototype phase. That's great. And then uh, one more that we've got in here is um, what time frame do you use for reviewing A-B tests? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we are aim uh, to have final result um, in two weeks. Uh, actually, uh, it's, it's, uh, we have some parameters because we, we can check ARPU after one day a user value or after seven days or after 14 days. So usually we try to get results after seven till 10 days. But actually we are today we try to shorten this even more. So it's work yeah. in progress. Um, we've, we've got a few more questions coming in. So if you've got a minute or two, it'd yeah, be, yeah, it'd be yeah, lovely. Sure, yeah. So we've got, um, do hyper casual games allow live ops events as often as casual games? Like how do you plan for those? Is it different or, or is it the same? Uh, it's a good question. I must admit that today uh, um, in crazy labs, we don't act in a specific way as casual games. We, uh, we don't do period, we, we do really a low amount of periodical uh, promotion, like spring promotion or things like that, uh, or daily. So we took some of the methodologies uh, that worked in social and we implemented it, but I think it's work in progress. And this is the way the hyper casual will evolve to. I think it can work, but yeah. it's still something that needs to be proven. Um, and then, um, We've got, if the same A-B test in two different conditions, for example, two different uh, geographical areas, uh, give opposite results, what do you yeah, do then? a lot of time, yeah. And actually we have a lot of this internal discussion uh, because sometimes if we have different results, it means that we need to hold two different configuration of the game. 
So if it's important enough, we do it, but we understand the operational consequences because then you need to hold this separation for the long term and QA twice all the time. But sometimes it's worth the effort and we do hold different configuration of the game for different audience. And to be honest, I'm glad someone asked that because that's one of the things I was thinking about when uh, <laughs> when listening to the talk. So I was hoping someone would ask that. So I'm yeah. g- g- glad to see that. Um, and then, um, so we'll do one more question and then I'll address the fact that there's something that someone's put in twice. Um, so uh, the last question here is, uh, do you take live ops uh, into consideration when analysing which games from external developers you want to work with? If we take live ops, uh, uh, like if they, if they've, I, I think what the uh, question, the person asking the question is, is trying to ask is, if the per, if you're working with, it, looking to work with a developer to publish yeah. their game, and they've already done some live ops, would you want to look at their data, or would you of want course. to just do your own data from scratch? Um, first of all, me personally, I always challenge everything I see. Yeah. So there are some things that I know that already worked and they are good. Sometimes I see a feature and said, okay, only for me, let's test it again because I want to validate yeah. the result and the improvement. Uh, in general, we will really, really happy to integrate the knowledge and the experience that external developer already have. And in addition, we have our own methodology. So it's, I think it's a combination. Yeah, and so I know, Frankly, uh, this last one that there's someone has, has asked twice for more information on, it's not really a specific question. And um, I don't know about you, but I, 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 you know, it's probably a talk in and of itself, but someone's really wondering if you can share any further insights into doing multiple A-B testing at the same time in parallel. So maybe within the same game, if you're testing various different things at the same time, is there any lessons or takeaways you could quickly share? Um, I can tell you one specific example for it, uh, because if we do a monetization test, test and we try to, uh, to, uh, to tweak the monetization parameter, how many ads to show and which, week, uh, which network to work and things like that. And in addition, we do game change and we introduce new RV, new content. So if we do this specific two parallel tests, they can cause like an issue because they um, affect each other. Yeah. So we, we have a dashboard and we see all the open tests any moment and the analyst and the machine gets its result, but we uh, our eyes are open and we see that maybe it can cause something. But if it's like a GLD or the speed of the knife or we change the color of the background, so it's not related to the monetization. So such tests, there is no harm in, in running in parallel. So our system allows that and we monitor every time the, the results and make sure that we understand what we see and, and there is not uh, a conflict between the tests. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Y- yeah, and, I'm, and I was going to say to whoever it was that asked the question, because it came through as anonymous, um, I'm sure you guys are going to be, you know, uh, all of you from, from Crazy Labs will be in the Discord or people can mm-hmm. reach out to you if they want to yeah. carry on asking some questions. Yeah, feel free to contact me in Discord or uh, my email is here and feel free. I will be happy. Yeah, anyone. fantastic. Well, yeah, like you say, actually, yeah, your email's behind you. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, please, uh, anyone, if you've got any more questions, because obviously sure. we've sadly run out of time, but, you know, yeah. the questions kept flying in. So very popular. Oh, someone's saying the email's slightly hidden. So if you... Oh, uh, sorry. The other sorry. way. Oh, there you go. That's it. We can see yeah. it now. So, so we'll get... I at Crazy Labs. There you go. Um, so, yeah, and um, we'll try and get someone to um, uh, write it into the... Um, the chat as well for for everyone who's still here after you go okay thank you yeah, yeah because it's a mirror one so maybe maybe i'll write it now for okay. everyone yeah. okay there we go and then everyone can reach out crazylabs.com thank you thank you for that there you go um so yeah so um that's that's to, oh i've only shared that to panelists but i will share that to everyone now um so just give that to everyone. There we go, everyone. So there you go. So okay. yeah, thank you. Fantastic yeah, thank talk. And thank you so much for staying with us for all the questions as well. Yeah, so um, sure, no problem. I'm happy to share uh, whatever we, we do here. <laughs> yes but obviously a fascinating talk that's really ignited our audience and we've had thank a very engaged much. audience today so thank you to you thank- for, the, for not just the talk but to crazy labs in general okay thank you so much i was happy to be here thank you for, for the fantastic event really interesting oh, thank you 
and thank you for letting me speak here. Oh no, and thank you for sponsoring this track as well, you know, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sophia. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.